Hey and welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I'm showing you how to create a custom header with the help of JetBlocks plugin. To create a header, I will need the widgets that go with JetBlocks plugin. They include authorization links, site logo, navigation menu, and the search bar. If you want to learn more about other widgets that go with JetBlocks plugin, check out our video tutorials and our documentation that goes to JetBlocks plugin. So first of all, I'm going to create a section. And my section is going to include two rows of columns. The top section is going to consist of four columns. So I'm going to duplicate one of those and create two more. And I will resize these two sections so they take up way less space. And these two are going to share pretty much the same percentage. Now I go to elements again and I drag this widget to my section and create two more columns. And in my bottom row, I will need three columns. So I'm going to duplicate this column only once. And here we go, I've got my layout ready and I can start filling it up with the widgets. So I go to elements again, scroll down and in the jet blocks tab, I find the widget called site logo. I drop it over there and here I can choose the logo type. It can be either text or image or you can also use both text and image for your site logo. Now I'm going to use an image and you can choose a logo image and a retina logo image, which should be the SVG file. Okay, so I choose the PNG image for the logo image and the SVG file for the retina logo image. So this logo can be resizable and will not lose the quality when viewed on larger screens. The next widget I'm going to use for my custom header is authorization links. So I'm just going to drop it onto this column and I will customize the links that will allow the user to log in or create an account on my website. Here you can see the list of all the available links, which include the login link, logout link, register link and registered link. And here you can tweak the order of the links in this widget. So let's start with the login link. You can enable or disable this link. You can also add URL and you can add an icon, but in this case, I'm going to switch the icon off. And login prefix is also available, but I'm going to go with no login prefix this time. And then let's go to the register link and it will be enabled. And I'll remove the icon and the prefix as well. So here we go. Now let's go to the style tab and tweak the alignment so it's aligned to the right. And then in the styles, I'm going to change the color of the links on normal and on hover. Then I'm going to do the same with the register link. So I'm done with the authorization links. So now they are kind of gray and when I hover over, they change the color to blue. Okay, it's done. Let's have a look at the other widgets that we have available. And we've also got the search widget and the navigation menu widget. Let's grab the navigation menu widget and drop it right there. And here we have the menu. Here you can choose the menu that is going to be used in this module. 
You can choose the type of the menu, vertical or horizontal. I'm going with horizontal. You can choose the icon that's going to be used when you have a, a drop down menu and when you display the sub items. So I will align this menu to the center and enable the mobile trigger. Then in the style tab, you can tweak the style and the design of the top level items that are these links and the sub level items that appear in the drop down menu. But I'm going to go with this design and proceed to the next widget, which is the search bar. So I'm dragging the search bar on this column. And as you can see, I already have both the button that enables the search and the field where I can input my search query. But as you can see, you can hide this search field and it's going to be visible only when you click on the button like so. Here you can change the animation that is applied to this search field, change the icon in some other settings, but now I'm going to the style tab. And here you see a lot of settings as well. Here you can tweak the look of the form, the pop-up box, the pop-up trigger, and the close button. Let's start with the trigger. This little button is a trigger itself, and I'll align it to the white. Change the background color to white. And the text color to gray. Then on hover, it's going to stay white, but it will become but the icon will become blue, like so. I also make it a little bigger. And here in the pop-up box, I can tweak the width of the search field. So I can make it more narrow or more wide. I'm going with this width and I can also change the look of these buttons, but I'm going to leave it as it is. So we're almost done with our custom header, but also I want to add a title here and a button over there. So I will use a simple Elementor widget, which is called heading, and add a simple heading over there. The color will also be gray and I'll make it a little lighter. And then change the content position to the middle. And I will do the same with this column, which contains the authorization links. So it looks better next to the search widget, like so. You can have a look and we're almost done and the one more thing that i want to add is a little button and i can use either the basic elementary widget which is called button or i can find the button widget which goes with the jet elements plugin here we go i'll remove the icon and I will disable the icons at all for this button. Then I'll go to the styles and just make it overall a little bit smaller so it looks more neat 
on our custom header and align it to the right. Then I want to change the background color of this button. Like so. And the text typography as well. So let this just be uppercase and the size is going to be 13. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Now you know how easy and fast it is to create a custom header with the help of JetBlocks plugin. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching!